Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm joined by Eric and Steve. And today we're going to dive back into another Unearthed Arcana. This time it's Feats for Races. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. And we have another Unearthed Arcana. They're really hitting them out of the park recently. I would say, you know, the downtime. The skill feats were, were, were okay. Like, there's some things with that that I, I'm not a huge fan of. But now we have you know, feats for races. I really enjoy these. These are pretty cool. I agree. But I think what we're getting close to the to the end of them doing one a week. Like, they're going, they, they announced that they're going back to the one a month so they can get into the other things. So we get, you know, more than 20 feats here that are specific to races, which I think the game has has been lacking. I think some of the options here are really flipping cool. And it's stuff that's like, oh well this is something that you were you were kind of missing. You know, you had this this race feel, but you were missing these things. So some races do what much better than others. Uh, I would agree. In here, like, you know, Dragonborn's got three, Dwarf's got three. Elf technically has two. And yeah, gnome is another one that has three. Uh, half elf has three. Half orc two. Halfling three. Human two. Typhling three. The human and human, I guess human half orc and elf, they get shorted a little bit. Now halflings, I do. Um, yeah, no, the halfling does not get shorted. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I don't, I don't feel bad for them either because they get some really good ones. Oh, the the halfling ones are fantastic. Second chance and bountiful luck. I've already seen people crying about these. On, on the internet, like, oh my god, the halflings. You get a halfling gonna... with the lucky feet, bountiful luck, second chance, and divination. Okay. Y yeah, it, that... it gets ridiculous. So, all right, do we want to go, you know, one by one? Do we want to just point out the things that we liked best, the things that we... All right, well, let's just, let's just start with, like, halfling, ha bountiful luck, right? Because right. I'm looking right at it. All right, so whenever an ally you can see within 30 feet rolls a 1 on the d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can use your reaction to let the ally re-roll re the dole, re-roll the die. You have to use the new result. So, essentially, you can extend your halfling luck to somebody else at the low, low cost of your reaction. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. That does not bother me at all. How often is the one going to come up? They have to be within 30 feet of you. And they have to have the reaction. So, right. you know, it was, resource management, I, I like that kind of stuff. I enjoy it. Um, another another cool one is is Critter Friend. It's right under it. And again, again, we're dealing with that, that mechanic that I kind of bitched about uh, on the last one. Where it's like, oh, you get the thing or you basically get the expertise. But I do like the fact that you get a couple spells, which is cool. Uh, I, I like all the one, I do enjoy those um, feats that give you access to a, an ability that really makes your character stand out and makes them a little bit different. And granted, it's speak with animals, which they kind of get a lesser form of that mm -hmm. already. But now they're also going to get animal friendship. And, they, you know, they get to use them every short rest, I believe. Yeah, Freckle would totally have this. It's not It's not even a short rest. It's once a day. Long rest. So it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, it is actually, it's interesting, but it's still one of the weaker ones. Sp speak with animal is, is literally a non-issue because it's like, okay, hey, something that's going to allow me to role play. If that's ever a problem for you, you need to rethink this game. Well, yeah, and like you, you can't even use it all that often. So, well, no, speak with animals is cast at will, and then animal friendship is once, once a, day. a day. Okay. So, all right. Well, yes. if the animal doesn't want to talk to you, it's just going to go away. It still has its own thoughts and feelings. It just gives you the ability to have a shared language. Okay. Unless it's a fish. Fish don't have feelings. Fish don't have feelings, huh? No. Never mind, it's a song you would get. <laughs> um, Dragon Fear. Here's one that you're kind of annoyed with. It, thematically, it's kind of cool. I mean, you know, it gives a, you get a bump to your stat. Nice, not bad. Uh, but, you know, charisma or strength makes sense. But instead of using your, you know, uh, your breath weapon, you can do a, a roar, which is kind of cool. I, I kind of dig on it. But uh, but it's just not that great, right? You you said you had some issues with this. Well, one. I think I think in general the breath weapon of a dragonborn, it's a really cool ability at low levels that peters out in in how much it actually does. Well, yes, it does scale 
as your proficiency bonus does, but it doesn't it doesn't become equatable to what higher level characters have the ability to do. I think at some point in time, instead of scaling up the damage, I think the the, the just exhaling your breath weapon should come down to a bonus action. Oh, okay. So uh, that that that's my beef with Dragonborn in general. I think they're a cool race. They're very thematic. Allows you to play something that's different. Dra- from the- well, Dragon Fear actually makes it much better because one, it's within thirty feet of you, and it's every creature of your choice. Yes. So it actually does make the breath weapon a lot better. It kind of fixes the thing you have a problem with, and and it's way better than the Berserker ability to frighten people. <laughs> well, there is that. Uh, I, I I have no problem with this particular feat. Dragon Fear is pretty cool. It allows you to become more draconic. So if you honestly want to build that dragon, dragonborn, you've got feats in here that let that happen. You've got three feats in here. You know, two of them will actually increase your stats. One of them gives you basically natural attacks as, as in the form of claws and also gives you scales uh, as That's long fair. as you aren't wearing armor. Right, and the third one gives you wings, which you know I'm certain there's people people that are griping about. Oh my God, a player characters that can fly all the time. Oh no! As long as you're not wearing hey, heavy yeah. armor. Actually, I feel like dragon hide. I feel like dragon hide, uh, dragon wings, and even the breath weapon are awesome for like a barbarian, dragonborn barbarian. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we also get drought high magic, which is essentially you're just getting. You're getting access to the more powerful uh, drow magic from previous editions. Yes. So I, I thought that was very thematic. I love it. It's not a big deal. You can't even do it until fourth level. So, you know, at that point, you would have, I believe you would have access to the spells you're now able to do, do anyway. Uh, the spell magic actually might be a little bit stronger, but you're, you're one level off. And right. again, you're, you're, you're doing these things once a day, I believe. Detect magic at will is, is, is kind of cool. Levitate and dispel magic once a day. Yeah, if you take it at fourth level, you're a level up on the mage, but you get it once. Yeah, pretty much, and then you're done. Which they're kind of cool for. I always like those for characters that aren't actually like spellcasters. So if you're playing a fighter or a ranger wielding two scimitars, um, <laughs> I think it's kind of cool to have access to to that magic and be able to do those those cool things. You know, and you could even like that, like that character could literally start stacking, you know, feet, you know, feats, especially if you're like a fighter and you get a bunch of them where it just, it doesn't really make you that much better. It's just more interesting. Right. Uh, Dwarven resilience. Uh, and so Ted in Ted's game, he's like, Hey, you guys can, um, you guys can have a racial feat because I like these. These are cool. I think he's going to work it into a story or something. Well, what, I want to play test these out and like. A lot of a lot of players they, they find themselves torn when it comes time to take options when you when you hit that level at you know four eight whatever have you and you can take a feat or a stat bump. If if there's no feat that is leaning towards you, it's like oh well I'll just take a stat bump. Or there's times that players are torn. Well, Most this, of the time, stat bumps are just better. So yeah, that that's what you know. So taking feats aren't usually going to happen. My character in Dave's game, I got loads of feats. I haven't taken, I think, a single stat bump. Because it makes the character have more options. And my character's not really... Combat isn't important. Other things are. So I was like, well, I want to I wanna introduce some of this stuff. I want to see how they work in the game. Well, I'm not just going to be like, hey guys, you know, you've got one. I want to I wanna have it come out in the game in the next session... And have them have a pre-picked reward that they're going to get. So, yeah, the players already know what's going to happen. And unless I somehow kill them all before they get to the spot, which, knowing my game, that's not possible. Uh, you know, they're going to get one of these things, and it's going to be, be kind of cool. Don't tell Mark that. <laughs> he did kill Mark, so. <laughs> He's going to, everyone will survive but Mark. Uh, so, Dwarven Resistance is you get a bonus to con, like, which is kind of cool. It's actually, so I'm actually going to end up taking this one, although it's less useful for my character. The dwarf feats just don't don't work for him that well, but they're still cool. I still like them. Whenever you take a dodge action in combat, you can spend one hit die to heal yourself, 
Uh, roll the die, add constitution modifier, regain hit points, equal that total. Which, is, that one's actually kind of cool for Uth and Gar, but, or that part of it is kind of cool for Uth and Gar, because one is, Ted is going to totally hate me if I take the dodge action. <laughs> and he's actually trying to hit me, because he's already ho very hard to hit. And and he'd have to roll, like, two natural 20s probably to hit me, with if, with rolling with disadvantage. And it it could be a breather. It's not like a ton of hit points you're getting back. You're getting, you know... I, you can use one hit die, so I could do a die 10. And I could blow a bonus action and use... Um, second wind. Second wind as well. So I could get a little bit of a bump. But I feel like at the level we are, like, even if I rolled max, it's only, like, 26 hit points. Like, that's, like, a half a hit, <laughs> you know, once you start getting up there in level. But it, it, it's definitely one of those abilities that is much more useful useful earlier. And it's fun. I like it. Uh, here's one... That you can take as an elf or a half elf, and I, I you know I think Nate said he's going to take this one. I don't think it's that good though. Uh, I I think I'm kind of torn with this. Is whenever you attack with, whenever you have advantage on attack roll, you can reroll one of the dice once. So essentially, that turns advantage into super advantage, and you're getting essentially the best of three die rolls. This is a this is a chance for when you can make it happen. You know, you get that, that, that better chance to hit or crit. So, I think, you know, Dave and I were talking about this one off camera. It's going to be really good for the rogues. And getting that extra chance to crit when you have advantage means you can really go crazy with your uh, with your sneak dice. I feel like certain rogues, I feel like rogues, certain fighter builds, you know, it'll be useful. Nate's cleric, not so much. Well, <laughs> Surprisingly, I mean, how, how often does he make a ranged attack? Yeah, well, that's just a, when. It, um, Actually, this is an, an attack roll. It doesn't yeah. even have to be advantage. Right, it, ranged. Yeah, it just has. Yeah, but you have to have advantage on attack. But that's what I mean. Like, how often is his character making making attack rolls, and then how often is he getting advantage? So. This this one is, and it's one of the reasons why I feel like the elves get kind of boned anyway, because this is one of their options, and it's right. not a. It's in my opinion, it's not a great option. Certain characters, it's going to be better than others. I agree, but that's um, true for everybody, right? So everybody's friend is half elf. You develop your magnetic personality to ease your way through the world, gain a plus one to char to charisma, and you gain proficiency in deception and persuasion. If you're already proficient in either skill, your proficiency is doubled. So here's one where they've kind of doubled up on the expertise. So I'm not super fond of this one being able to be like, oh, well, I'll take one feat and get a stat bump and expertise in two skills. Yeah, it's a, re it's a, it's really good. <laughs> so I would say like, all right, knock this down to you can get both proficiencies, and if you are proficient in either. You can have expertise in one of your choice. That, that that's as far as I would go with it. Well, you know, next month they'll have the uh, the survey. Oh, I know <laughs> that you can weigh in on. Uh, the, so next, I guess we kind of go, are going in order is fade away for gnome. Uh, I love this one because one, it gives you the stat bump to intelligence. Nice, always good. And as a reaction, once per short rest, you can basically go invisible after you get hit for a round. So it's it's like not super powerful, but it could be useful. It's fun. I think I feel like it fits with you know the David the Gnome type character. I like it. So Fate teleportation is the one that I would suggest for Nate. Yeah, that's what um, I would have definitely taken. You know, you get your intelligence by one. Not going to be super helpful for Nate, but you know it, it's still something. And then you learn the Misty Misty Step spell and can cast it once without expending a spell slot. Uh, the way the way a lot of this stuff has been viewed is when it says you learn it, you add that to your spells known, and if you have access to spell slots, you can use that. So he gets it once for free, which is going to allow him to get out of trouble or get closer to somebody else or position himself for spell usage. I think it's incredibly useful. Yeah, yeah I wonder if there's going to be clarification on that, because it does seem... It's, it does make it a lot better whenever there's a spell and you're just adding it to your spell list. And that's super helpful for a lot of classes, especially ones like Sorcerer, who gets less options. So, uh, the uh, Flames of Flethagos. Is that how you pronounce that? Could be, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, you learned, you learned to call on Hellfire to serve your commands. 
which makes you more likable too, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so stat bump to intelligence or charisma. Uh, whenever you roll fire damage for a spell, you can reroll one. Uh, you have to use a new roll, even if it is a one. And uh, whenever you cast a spell that deals fire damage, you can cause flames to wreathe you until the end of turn. The flames don't harm you or your possessions, and they shed bright light for 30 feet. Uh, while the flames are present, any creature within 5 feet of you that hits you with a melee attack takes 1d4 fire damage. I, I like that. I, I like It's like it's totally ribbonish, but you, it might come in handy. And it's fun. You know, rerolling ones is cool. And if you're going with like that... If you're going with some kind of like pyromancer type build, it's going to be thematic. Or if you just want to be like, I am of hell, it's kind of cool too. <sighs> I'm so goth. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we get the grudge bearer. Totally, totally a dwarven thing. Totally fits, which gives you a bump to strength, con, or wisdom. Uh, during the first round of any combat against your chosen foes, your attack rolls against any of them have advantage. So, like, this is really, like, you can really... If you want to be a Dwarven Ranger, you can really double down. It's like, I hate you. I hate you so much. Or you can hate more people. <laughs> when, when any of your chosen foes make an opportunity attacks against you, it makes that uh, attack roll with disadvantage. Whenever you make an intelligence, arcana, history, nature, or religion check to recall information about that chosen foe, you add double your proficiency bonus to the proficiency check um, if you're not normally proficient. So... Even if you're not normally, yeah. Proficient. Even if, yeah. So. I, I I thought this one was really cool because it kind of speaks to the. All right, I'm a dwarf. I hate orcs. I've always hated orcs. So you know what? I know stuff about orcs because I hate them. I know how to kill them. I know how to track them. And this really hasn't been done before, other than the stone cutting, um, where it's like, all right, well, unless I specifically take a skill that's going to denote this hatred, this study. You know, here now it's like, all right, well, I take this feat, and that that counts as my 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 situation. So no, I'm not gonna take Arcana, but it's a very specific expertise, which is kind of cool. It's like the stone cunning. They they you know they went back to that mechanic with the dwarf, and it harkens back to older editions when you know when a lot of the races had racial enemies, and right. the, really that's all they did is they just brought that back. So it was kind of cool. I like it. Uh, human determination. I don't even remember what this one does, to be honest. Uh, so you, you get a bump of one to your choice, and when you make an attack roll, an ability check, or saving throw, you can do so with advantage. Once you use this ability, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Oh, never mind. I do remember this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's really great, especially if you're playing, like, the, um, the optional, the variant. Like, you want, you know, like, you don't really, you're not really, like, super thrilled about their choices. You go, oh, well, I'll just take human determination, and then I get that plus one wherever I want it, and and the ability is not bad. I mean, you'll you you're definitely going to use it at some point. So right. so that that actually does turn them into, hey, I've got you know one thing once per short rest that I can get advantage on, and I have a plus two plus one for my stat bumps. Yeah, pretty much. So it's not bad, especially especially if you're feeling a little indecisive. Uh, the next one, Infernal Constitution, I think is really good. Because if you're a Tifling and you take this, you know, one, you get that con bump. You know, no one is ever going to complain about that. Nope. Uh, resistance to cold and poison. And they're already resistant to fire damage. So that, that is nice, having all three of them. So that's the, it's a lot of resistances. And, and then they also have advantage on being poisoned. So basically they, basically they become like stout halflings or dwarves. <laughs> in, a, in a sense. But you know what? So here's the thing, right? If you wanted to play like, like a Tifling and you wanted to play a variant... Of like and being say like you're actually you know you're a dwarf but your 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 heritage is you're dwarven but your tifling infernalness came out like I know this doesn't jive with five e um, lore but like lore from previous editions like it really didn't make sense because anyone could technically kind of be a tifling and like this would be a way to kind of like say no, to bring back some of the dwarvenness right. to it I guess absolutely so uh, orcish aggression as a bonus action you move, you can move up to your speed toward an enemy of your choice that you can see or hear you must end your move closer to that enemy than you started so it literally just gives you the orc ability out of the monster manual so you're getting that dash action as a bonus action as long as you get closer to your enemy I think it's really good for mobility on the battlefield if you don't have anything that's going to require that's going to be able to use your bonus action so you're going to play a, an orc warrior that wants to control the battlefield. You know, like you're... It'll come in handy if you're, you're not a rogue. You yeah, know, if you're, you're a fighter you're, or a barbarian. You're a spear fighter of old. He would oh, take, yeah. He would have taken that. 
Yeah, it would have been useful for him. Although Orcus Fury is way better. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Why don't you get into that one? Uh, you know, increased strength or con. You know, not gonna, nothing to sneeze at there. When you hit with an attack made with a simple or martial weapon, you can roll one of the weapon damage dice an additional time and add its extra uh, damage to the weapon's damage type. Once you use this ability, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest, which is really good because, you know, as a half-orc, you get to roll extra damage when you crit anyway. So, like, you would probably want to try and hold this in reserve for, for a crit. crit. You know, so you, you start pumping those damage, especially if you're a barbarian. And then immediately after you use re Rentless Endurance trait, you can use your reaction to make a weapon attack. So, so with with this one, Dave and I were kind of, you know, the day, the day it came out, Dave and I were talking, and it's like, all right, if we take half orc, barbarian, and orcish fury, and you're using a great axe, and you crit, you can do was it six die twelve? You start doing a lot of extra dice of damage because you you could get four from basically being a half orc between being a half orc and this feat that would give you four. And then you get two for the weapon itself. That's six. Now, if you happen to be a higher level barbarian, you start adding extra dice there too. Now, those don't get doubled; they're just extra. But still, right. at ninth level, that's seven die twelve. That's nothing to sneeze at. No, no, that's not. I mean, that, that's that's one mighty hit. You are half orc. So then we go on to prodigy. Uh, this is half elf or human. Uh, this allows you to get a, a stat bump to one of your choice. You gain. One skill proficiency of your choice, one tool proficiency of choice, and fluency in one language of choice. I looked at this one and this is like, all right, this would totally be up Rallion's alley. Like, wait, I get, I get skills, I get languages and tools. Woohoo! Yeah, this this is a nice uh, fluff one for for it to take at first level as a human. Uh, you know, if you want to be a skill monkey type character, it's a nice one to take. Like, it's got a lot of uses, but. Ultimately, I don't. It's not going to really change the outcome of the game, but it's fun. Yes, and and again, that that skill monkey type character, which Relian has kind of always been, it's it's slightly, in my opinion, better than the skilled feat because you're getting a stat bump as well as a skill, a tool, and a language. Where skilled is just three skills. Yeah, but I feel like they're they're weighing skills heavier than uh, tool or language. I, I I agree with that. But yeah, but all around, that's it's a good one. So that second chance for halflings, if you if you weren't too happy about um, bound for luck, bound for luck, you probably aren't gonna like this one either. I'm thinking, but you know, again, uh, bump to dex, con, or charisma, basically, and they're they're all kind of follow the same formula. Whatever your your natural stats where you get bumps to as the racials, that's where you where they're gonna go. But what I find interesting about about those ones where they have a diverse set of options. Are, I was like, all right, well, if I take Stout Halfling, which is normally Dex and Con, mm -hmm. I can still take this one and get it to Charisma. Well, you, you technically could, so, yeah. Cause it's, because it's all Halflings have Same access. thing with, like, the Mountain Dwarf one. They're like, ah, I'm going to put it on Wisdom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's a thing, but it's not really a big deal. So when a creature hits you with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to force that creature to re-roll. This is the thing that I'd hold on to for when a DM crits. Yes. I just no, I don't want you to crit. That's a, that's the only reason I take this one. Yeah, you, and you take Bountiful Luck, you take Second Chance, you take Luck. But I mean, it's a lot of feats too. Like you can't even do that until like twelfth level, unless you know, unless you happen to be uh, a rogue or a, a fighter. Yeah. So, so. Ha half halfling rogue taking Lucky Second Chance Bountiful Luck. I think you you pull it off by tenth. But you're also not going to be doing. You're not going to be getting stat bumps either. So that's the other thing. That is, that is, but depending upon how much you want to be that dice manipulator. Yes. Like your diviner, like the diviner character that people were talking about, they could do it, but they can't actually do it until twelfth level. So, right. you know, at that point, I don't. Is it really that big a deal? So I, I don't, I don't think it is. But I, it's I, there. I think it's fun, and if you are into the actual the the crunch and the dice rolling of it. And you find enjoyment in being that manipulator, dude, go for it and have fun with it. And if you're the DM, let them, man. It's just a game. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them. It's a game. Uh, we got squat and nimbleness, and that is basically for dwarves, gnomes, or halfling. Essentially, anyone that has a reduced movement speed gets this one. Uh, stat bump, strength, or dexterity. Which, uh, which is funny, because that covers... That kind of covers, I guess... Covers dwarf and and halfling, but not gnome at all. 
I oh, know, no, they do get a Dex from um, Forest Gnome. And increase your walking speed by five feet. You gain proficiency in acrobatics or athletics. If you're already proficient in that skill, proficiency bonus is doubled. So yet another one where they're you loving can, that man. And they're like, you, expertise. You get expertise. You get expertise. You get expertise. It's like Oprah. <laughs> Everybody gets expertise. Uh, here's what we we're actually talking about in one of our, our weekly live chats, uh, not the daily live chats, but the weekly live chat, and and we're like, hey, maybe we should make this, but apparently we don't need to now, and that is the idea that rock gnomes being able to do their tinker thing and create more things. So you get a bump to dex or intelligence when you make a check with your tinker tools, add double your proficiency. So again, expertise. When you make a device with tinker trait, you have additional options such as alarm, calculator. Lifter, timekeeper, or weather sensor. So the so that so now like if you take this one, I guess that gives you like seven different tinker things you can make, and I like it. It's fun. Like it's not like super useful. You know, it's not really going to change the game, incre you know, incredibly much. But calculator, you really just make an abacus. Timekeeper, you really make a pocket watch. I think weather key weather sensor, you're just making an elaborate sundial. Right, and I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head how long it takes to actually make your toys or make your tinker stuff, but I don't think it's like a round anyway. So. Yeah, you're not doing this in combat. <laughs> so wood elf magic. You learn magic of primeval woods, and basically you get one druid cantrip, which I love these, and me and Ted are both like, thorn whip. <laughs> Why would you take anything else? Produce flame is cool too, but... I just love I just love the Thorn Whip spell. <laughs> Get over here. Yeah, pretty much for that scorpion build. And then you need uh, then you need spell sniper to increase the range. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or just take it with spell sniper. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That has nothing to do with wood elf magic. Uh, so you also get long strider and pass without trace. Each of each of which you can cast once without using a spell slot. Wisdom is your ability for those and both are really good like long strider is a really good utility spell and it lasts a while and it just adds 10 to your movement and you're already a wood elf and you're already freaking fast as hell so you know it doesn't matter and well it, it's helpful even more helpful and pass with tra without trace is a boss spell so i feel like we did every single one of these but barbed hide so we might as well just go back and do that one <laughs> i was gonna say the, say the same thing so you got to be a tiefling you get a stat bump to charisma or constitution as a bonus action you can force your body to protrude in spikes at the start of each of your turns while the barbs are out you deal 1d6 piercing damage to any creature grappling you or grappled by you you gain proficiency in intimidation if you're already proficient proficient expertise yeah, so it's kind of like so. This is kind of cool if you want to build a grappler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you just grapple and then spike the shit out of them. Spiky, 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 spiky. And you can do this as much as you want too. Yeah, because so. there's nothing. There's no limiting action on the barbs. You need to take this and brawny, and then you be a badass grappler mm -hmm. as a tiefling. And if you Rawr. go with the variant, you can have wings and you can just fly them up and drop them. Which is probably giving DMs right now. Aja to thinking about it. <laughs> oh my god, he said fly. <laughs> you can throw it at like fourth level. Oh no, first level. They get the variant, so it's not even like a feet or anything. But you can spike them and then fly up with them. So that would be a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, this this is by far this is one of the best on our our kind they came out with. You know, there's some things that we're like, eh. But you know, for the most part, I I like this. All of this can go in my game. Don't even really have to think about it. The, the Good job. The flavor is great. Uh, I, I wouldn't see why anyone would have any problem with, with, with this stuff. And like, and I, I want I want to be like, oh well, you know, you become more, you know, a, the, the more the epitome of what these races are, and I just think it's great. So, question is, what do you guys think about them? Are you using them in the, in your games just yet? Let us know in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Twitter. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.